This video is presented by High Performance Insulation Professionals in partnership with Owens Corning and Kanoff Insulation. In this video, we will establish what the minimum general requirements are for installation, application, and specific materials for fibrous bat insulation, as well as the steps to assess and apply a grade one, grade two, and grade three installation according to ResNet standards identified in Appendix A. Prior to assessment, consider these safety measures upon entering a job site. Depending on the manufacturer, SPF requires you to completely vacate the job site 24 to 48 hours to let it off gas. A minimum of 24 hours is required. Hard hats, safety vests, protective eyewear, and safety-toed shoes should be required if you are entering a live job site. A dust mask is recommended if there is active construction. Wearing gloves can protect you from protruding staples or nails. Personal protective equipment is your last line of defense. Mistakes on construction sites can cost lives. Don't let it be yours. Insulation shall be installed to manufacturer's recommendations. The different product manufacturer recommendations can be found online with a simple search. Kanoff Insulation and Owens Corning can both be found on the manufacturer's packaging and on HPIP's website. No air spaces shall be allowed between different insulation types or systems. Insulation shall be installed to the required density and thickness necessary to achieve the labeled R value. The U.S. Department of Energy has established eight climate zones that should be taken into consideration when determining the necessary R value that should be used. Insulation shall fill around obstructions including, but not limited to, framing, blocking, wiring, and pipes without substantial gaps or voids. Bad insulation should be split around wires and not tucked in front of or behind, which would cause compression. Insulation installed in framed floor assemblies shall be in substantial and permanent contact with the subfloor. For rim or band joist applications, Insulation shall be in substantial and permanent contact with the rim or band joist framing and tightly fitted to intersecting solid floor joists, wood eye joists, or extend continuously through open web floor trusses. Interior sheathing or air barrier is not required provided there is an air barrier on the exterior side or the insulation material is installed as an air barrier material. Air permeable insulation installed in ventilated attics and vented sloped roofs shall have a wind block, an air chute, or eave baffle securely fastened and installed at the eave of the soffit edge vent of every cabin and shall extend up and beyond the surface of the insulation or to the ridge vent. Insulation shall fill the cavity being insulated side to side top to bottom and front to back. Insulation shall be enclosed on all six sides with durable materials. Face bats shall be stapled to the face of the studs or side stapled to the studs with no buckling of the stapling tabs or the tabs shall be permitted to be left unstapled. Faced bat products without tabs and friction fit products shall not be required to be stapled when installed in walls. When side stapled, compression is permitted only along the edges of the cavity to the depth of the stapling tab. Insulation shall be closely fitted around obstructions including, but not limited to, framing, blocking, wiring, and pipes to avoid substantial gaps, voids, or compression. Minor defects. When installing BAT, 
no more than 2% of the total insulated area shall be compressed below the thickness required to attain the labeled R value or contain gaps or voids in the insulation. These areas shall not be compressed more than three quarters of an inch of the specified insulation thickness in any given location. Voids extending from the interior to exterior of the intended insulation areas shall not be permitted. Grade one is used to describe insulation that is generally installed according to manufacturer's instructions and or industry standards. Insulation materials should uniformly fill each cavity side to side and top to bottom without substantial gaps or voids around obstructions and is split or fitted tightly around wiring and other services in each cavity. To inspect, probe in, around, or through the insulation and or the vapor retarder in several places to see whether these requirements are met. Remember to repair any damage caused by inspecting the insulation. During inspection, typically before drywall is installed, if the exterior sheathing is visible from the building interior through gaps in the cavity insulation materials, it is not considered a grade one installation. Moderate defects. When installing BAT, no more than 15% of the total insulated area shall be compressed or contain gaps or voids in the insulation. These areas shall not be missing or compressed more than three quarters of an inch of the specified insulation thickness in any given location. Inset staples are allowed for bad insulation. Voids through interior to exterior of the intended insulation areas shall not be permitted. Substantial defects. Insulation not compliant with the minimum installation requirements of grade one or grade two are considered grade three. Substantial gaps and voids with missing insulation comprising more than 15% of the total insulated area. Or it is visibly apparent in grade three installs that the installer is oftentimes rushed or careless, leading to gaps, wiring compression, and missing insulation. For more information on fibrous bat insulation grading, visit ResNet's website. If you're interested in learning about fibrous bat insulation installation, visit HPIP's website or email us at training at hpipros.org.